So welcome to my presentation <clears throat> about the robotic surgery and the risk center solutions. So my name is Nomita and I'm doing my bachelor's in material science. And now before I'm actually talking about my subject, I want you people um, that you know about these two definitions as these will come up throughout my presentation. And this would be the minimally invasive surgery is actually done using small cuts and few stitches and um, may cause less pain and damage to the healthy tissue and the patient may have faster recovery than with traditional surgery. Whereas the laparoscopic surgery is uh, done with the aid of a laparoscope, uh, which is actually a thin tube like instrument with a light and a lens for viewing. And it may also have a tool to remove tissue. So the laparoscopic surgery is also done by small cuts where the instruments are inserted in the body of the patient. Means without opening um, the whole abdomen, for example. So there are actually three types of systems which are used in the medicine. The first one is the active system, which works autonomously and undertakes pre-programmed tasks. And the second one is the semi-active system, um, which, is surgeon -driven, which is a surgeon-driven element to complete the pre-programmed tasks. And the third one is the master-slave system, um, which is entirely dependent on the surgeon's activity so that the hand movements of the surgeon are transmitted to surgical um, instruments, which then reproduce the surgeon's hand activity. And this system is the main content of my presentation um, where the Vinci and Soys are the leading platforms. The use of robots in medicine has only 30 years of history, means it's really new in this, um, in this department. And the first surgical robot which was used on a human patient was the Puma 200 in 1985 for a neurosurgical biopsy. And then, of course, improvement in the technique and le uh, led to several new platforms, which are now, uh, as I mentioned, the Da Vinci and the Zeus. So as I actually searched for some information, it was um, surprising to me that there are already a huge number of surgeries done with the help of a robot and I was really not concerned about it and so only for example in Geneva they reported in 2017 that they did over 2500 robotic surgical procedures and when I searched more I found some numbers where in 2018 18, there were over 3,000 robotic platforms installed worldwide and more than 200,000 robotic procedures are performed every year. And it is expected that the robotic surgical market will grow about 14% till 2024. And it had a market value of 5.4 billion US dollar already in 2018. And it will grow for sure. So the leading question of this talk will be what if the robotic assisted surgery takes over in future, especially what if the remote operation is the future. And I now want to show you what the aim of the robot assisted surgery what, uh, was, what the opportunities, uh, what opportunities it brings, and of course the limitations and risks which have to be considered at once um, this invention um, and the remote surgery will be the future and what solutions there are or what improvements uh, have to be done. So the aim of this invention was that it should help people to recover as quickly and completely as possible. Means to reduce the length of the stay of a patient in the hospital, reduce complications after the operation and mort mortality rate, etc. This actually means to innovate for minimally invasive care. But not only improvements for the patients was the aim, um, but also to reduce the work of the hospital's workers and maybe to reduce the number of employments. So 
um, the government, government and hos or hospitals can save in employment costs. So there are actually several opportunities for the surgeon as well as for the patient if surgeries are done uh, with the help of a robot. For example, for a surgeon, it is difficult to reach every angle during a surgery and therefore the risk is higher to harm other organs. With the help of a robot, which has, a degree, uh, which has degrees of freedom, every angle and movements can be reached with a precise control uh, without harming any other organs, um, which is also in, in the favor for the patient, of course. And the surgeon has also a 3D vision uh, where he has a better magnification. And in the future, if the market will expand, the surgeon will be able to do the surgery from a remote place and doesn't have to be um, present in the operation room. So he can choose actually a comfortable and silent room for himself. And because the robot has more arms to hold the instruments compare, compared to a human being, um, different tasks can be performed simultaneously, which is also positive for the patient because the time used for a surgery is shortened. And the patient, of course, the opportunities, opportunities for the patients are these, which I mentioned before, the, the length of the stay for the recovery and complications and different risks are reduced. So this is actually a table which um, shows a comparison of robot assisted and the, and the laparoscopic operations. Um, which actually shows uh, in which procedures, which method is, uh, has got a higher performance. And what can be seen is that the robotic surgery is still not used for every procedure. Uh, there are only a few of them where it can be used, even if it is suggested not to use it for a um, patient with cancer because it had even negative outcome. So um, I did, actually search about more information, but what the negative outcomes were, it is not mentioned anywhere, unfortunately. So what can be noticed, what also can be noticed is that the length of stay of a patient has been reduced with the robot assisted surgery. Um, and, but overall seen the laparoscopic method has a higher performance still. And this is because of of course, there are some limitations of the robotic surgery, which do not allow to have a better performance compared to the laparoscopic method. So the limitations, for example, is, uh, are the high costs. Um, the installation cost of a robot is around one to two million uh, US dollar, and this excludes the cost of buying new instruments because they have a limited life and it also excludes the ongoing services like new software updates and so on. So, and also the whole system is still very complex and this makes it actually difficult to use as you have different arms and buttons to, to use them. So to be familiar uh, with the robot, it requires time and training of the whole surgery team, especially the surgeon. So, even if the surgeon gets a 3D vision with better magnification, the resolution is not good enough and the limited physical feedback makes it actually difficult for the surgeon to estimate how much pressure can be put on the instruments. And not only that, there is also a delay in taking over the tasks from, from the computer uh, controller till they are actually performed on the patient, which is one of the biggest limitation. And Overall, the robot is very big with different arms, which requires space in a hospital, which also makes it actually difficult to move the whole robot, as there are also many, many cables connected to it. Just, I'm always talking about it so big and so huge, and this is just a picture that you can imagine. Um, so you see at A, uh, this is the control system, the computer where the surgeon sits and operates. 
Um, in the middle, the B is the whole robot, robot with the arm and the bed for the patient where the operation is done. And C is the monitor for the whole operation team. Um, so everybody can watch what is actually happening and so on. Yeah, please ignore my father's face, um, but this is just a photo to show you that there are enough cables connected where the, where, um, the operation team also have to be careful not to fall over these cables. And it is also to show you how big only the computer control system is compared to a 165 centimeter tall human being. So, yeah. Now to the stakeholders, there are actually different stakeholders um, which came up to my mind, which are interested in the robotic surgery. One of this is the market, of course, which wants to improve in technology and by improving also reduce the costs, which makes it then more interesting for the hospitals to invest in a robot and the higher the demand is, the more the market can grow. And the hospitals, of course, are interested because they want to provide a better health care for their patients, a better work life for their surgeons and nurses by reducing the length of stay and the readmissions of their patients. And by this, also the costs for the patient can be reduced, which is also in interest of the patient, which I now actually uh, they put in the category of the society. And reducing costs are also uh, in the interest of the insurances, because as far as I know, um, the insurance uh, insurances don't take over any costs till now. And it has also to be considered that as much robotic surgery will be done in future, the more surgeon and nurses have to be trained means more money is needed in the, edu in the education system where again the society comes in because they will have to pay more for the education system. Now, overall seen, there are still not more benefits compared to laparoscopic intervention and that's why very less countries um, and hospitals are ready to invest in a robot. But if this will be the future, some risk should be considered, especially when the remote operation will come up. So what if the surgeon, for example, operates from America and the patient is in Switzerland and somewhere there is a power breakdown, means the operation cannot be done anymore and they have to change as fast as possible um, to the laparoscopic method. And the problem of remote operation is also that the tasks which the surgeon gives over to the computer reaches the robot after a few minutes. Now, uh, think about what when this all is done in different countries. Um, this also can be very risky as it is difficult for the surgeon to proceed with further tasks. And not only that, what will be done if an emergency occur occurs, like, for example, um, the patient starts to bleed, where every minute is important to save the life. What then when the tasks have always a delay of some minutes? And um, because the robot is so big and so many cables are connected to it, this all makes it actually time intensive to change the patient to the laparoscopic operation in an emergency, which is contraproductive. So in any case, a trained team has to be present in the operation room for sure, and which means the, um, the employment rate cannot be reduced. And even if these points can be improved once, is there always a trust on digital technology which is dependent on the network? And of course, there are um, some solutions and many more solutions, but I'm focusing on um, some of them because they are right now, um, right now they are important. And so 
one of them is um, to improve uh, technique uh, like technology, uh, which um, which actually enables uh, the mobility of the robot, and the natural haptic feedback has to be improved to make it more natural for the surgeon and more easier and comfortable to, for, for the surgeon to operate. And of course, um, the resolution of the 3D image um, should be better. And of course, um, so the technical improvement should also bring um, an expansion into new surgical procedures. And this means actually that the clinical outcomes have to be improved. Uh, of course, um, the costs are always um, important to reduce them and the time and the a time of one procedure should also be reduced. And this means overall that actually that there should be a better match of the costs with the benefits and the outcomes. Yes, so this was my short presentation and thank you for your attention.